Hey, welcome back to Mechanical Pros. Got Quentin with me. We're going to be talking about our favorite tools. Quentin, uh, tell me what you got. What What is your two favorite tools? Sure. So two of my favorite tools, as you can see, are uh, enclosed in Klein cases. One of them is going to come with a Klein case. The other is not. So let's open up the first one that comes with the Klein case. All right. So this is actually the Klein ET600. And this is a uh, winding insulation tester. Okay, and so the first thing that comes to everybody's mind whenever we talk about... Megameter. Yeah, a megameter, right? Yeah. So that's the first thing that comes to everybody's mind <laughs> um, when talking about these is, is making a motor. But once you get comfortable using this tool, you realize that it has... It's, it's an invaluable tool to have on your truck. I think every service technician should yeah. have this tool on their truck. Um, a lot of the uh, models that are comparable in price just have LED lights that don't really give you any real information. Yeah, those are the ones that I remember the Christmas tree. Yeah, the what first one that? I ever saw was has cr exactly Christmas tree. The Christmas tree. tree. Yep. Yeah, and it says, you know, anything below 20 is it says bad. You get a red light bad. Okay, well, how is it bad? You know, okay. So, most uh, motor manufacturers, the the minimum mega ohm reading is actually much lower than 20. You know, so if you if you go up to a, a motor and you're saying, "Okay, it's bad because my Christmas tree is telling me it's bad." Well, that's not a good enough uh, reason to condemn a motor. So you need to have an accurate tool that's going to give you a LCD readout and say, hey, this is the actual uh, mega ohm reading. This is actually the integrity of the windings. And so this is an excellent tool, especially at the price point, very comparable to, to some of the higher end uh, models, the four figure models. This is really cheap in comparison. It's about a tenth of the price. Okay. How much? Uh, so right now, I think we're pushing this one three MRG parts at about 160 bucks. Oh, that's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. And yeah. it comes with a case. It comes with leads. It comes with everything you need. I think it even comes with batteries. I can't remember. I've had this one a little while, um, but it comes with the uh, the little alligator clips. So I mean, once you get this tool, it's ready to go to work immediately, and it measures all the way up to a thousand volts. So a general rule of thumb, you know, rule of thumbs are, can be dangerous, but right. a, a general rule of thumb is uh, basically you double whatever the voltage of the motor is. Okay, so if it's a 480 volt motor, I'm going to make it at a thousand volts. Okay, and so this meter is capable of making all the way up to 4,000 mega ohms. Okay, which is, that's, that's really good winding um, insulation. Um, so once we power it up, we'll go ahead and set it to 1,000. I don't have the meter leads connected here, but you see it's got a, a, a large display, mm -hmm. really nice, backlit. This thing is sweet. I mean, it does volts AC, volts DC, um, resistance, continuity. I mean, it's for the price, you cannot beat this thing. Absolutely love it. But, you know, beyond motor testing, um, like on your mini splits and things like that, it's a good way to check the... Uh, the integrity of the wiring between the two devices or if you've got wiring in a conduit it's a good way to find a nicked wire and conduit super convenient small um, you can throw it in your tool bag really truly love this meter it's been it's been a great tool awesome anything we need to know about specific um honestly get one i mean i can't express that enough get one um you know as our technicians need them here this is exactly what they're getting um because i mean it's you can't beat it you know, um, there's, just get it, practice just it, just get it, practice it, yeah. play with it, get familiar with it. Um, once you're familiar with it, you, you won't know how you lived without it before. Uh, just this week, I've used it twice and two occasions found uh, nicked wiring and, and conduit. Yeah. You know, where the other uh, Christmas tree maker might have told us the motor's bad. OK, but we get an accurate reading um, using this. You can start breaking down your uh, wiring segments and uh, isolating your motors and things like that and find where on um, the short truly is identify if it's in a single wire what's going on you know are you making compressors absolutely yeah yeah and something too that is worth mentioning is a mega meter can be a diagnostic tool but it's more so to be used for a trending tool okay so if you're going out all the time on a, a pm contract or something like that and you're making the motor basically it's you're not supposed to just go out and condemn motors but that's not really its true purpose um, unless it's truly shorted to ground. This will help you find a short to ground, but from a winding insulation testing standpoint, you should be conducting these tests regularly and you should be monitoring it. So that way, if the, if the insulation is degrading, you can inform your customer, hey, the insulation is degrading. You know, it's, it's dropped 200 mega ohms since the last on. time I was here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's, there's other influences that, that surround doing mega ohm testing. You know, is the motor wet? Is the compressor full of liquid? These are all things that are important to note whenever you're doing your test. And so if you're recording this information, note the conditions as well. Yeah. Because a cooling tower motor is gonna meg low, you know, because mm -hmm. it's, it's saturated, it's what? Supplier Always. fan motor in a, in a supplier stream, it's gonna meg low because the windings are wet. So all those things should be considered. 
Um, if you're going to mega them with compressor, you come up and, and the breaker's tripping. You say, well, I want to mega them the compressor and see if it's shorted to ground. Well, first, feel of the compressor. If it's cold to the touch, it probably has liquid sitting in it. You need to get that liquid out of the compressor before conducting that mega ohm test because you can actually get a reading short to ground because that liquid is in there, right? Mm -hmm. So you heat it up with a heat gun, turn on the crankcase heater, disable the compressor, come back at a later time. Um, whatever you got to do to get that liquid out of there so that you can get an accurate reading. Love it. All right, what else? So my next favorite tool is the EEV Mate. Okay, so this has been another invaluable tool that I really don't know how I lived without now that I've been using. I've been using this one for about, well, this is actually my second one. The first one, the side box on the truck fell open and it fell out on the interstate. But yeah. anyways, I've been using the EEV Mate platform for about- You get a nicer years. case when you buy your own. Yeah, yeah, so I, I bought yeah. this case separate. I think this case also probably came from MRG Parts. Um, Klein tool hard case, it fits everything in here perfectly, mm -hmm. keeps everything protected. But the EEV Mate is um, designed to um, control electronic expansion valves, uh, particularly found in, in mini splits, VRF, things like that. And so there's a couple of different battery options. Um, one option is the 9 volt battery. Um, if you don't like carrying around batteries that are disposable, you can get a battery pack. Yeah. It'll come with an adapter for that so that you can just plug it into the battery pack. So it'll come with a cable that will plug into uh, the EEV, okay? So you plug this guy into this end, and then this, you will unplug the EEV from the printed circuit board, plug this into the EEV um, driving motor, whether it's a, a coil type or a gear-driven motor, and then you'll power up the EEV mate, and it'll say EEV mate on the screen. And then as you control the EEV, it's going to show you how many steps it's taken, yeah. And also as a turbo mode, if you hold down on the button and then push up, it's going to go really fast. Okay. It's pretty cool. And so if you're connected up here, uh, if you're connected to an actual coil, you can make sure that the, the lights are pulsating like, like you see here in the video. And that's indication that the coil is, is intact. Yeah. Okay. So this is just an extremely helpful tool. So if you've got a, an EEV that's stuck or on its way out and you need to get the customer up and going overnight or something like that, or even just to recalibrate an EEV. Uh, if you've got an EEV that's gone astray, you can go back and bring it back in with this tool and you don't have to, you know, wait on a part to come in or charge your customer for something that you can get done. In so how do you know if it's out of, out of calibration? That would be something that you would discover on Service Checker okay. and in our VRV world. So on your, on your servicing tool that you're servicing your VRF equipment on, that's where you're going to see it at. Okay. But then how are you using the EEV mate to sure. calibrate it? Sure. So in the VRV world, what I would do traditionally is shut the system down, mm -hmm. let it go down to zero pulses, so fully closed. I know that all my expansion valves are closed. And then I'm going to drive it down to where I know the closed position is. Um, you can do the opposite of that and basically put it into force recovery mode, drive everything open, and then fully retract that EEV. But I have seen some instances where that results in, in bleed by. You know, so you kind of have to find the sweet spot on the close, you know, whenever you're closing it down. Um, but if there's a way, like say on an indoor unit, for instance, if you can turn off that individual indoor unit and then you can watch it on service checker and then slowly close that valve down until you get to a position where you know that it's closed and it's no longer feeding refrigerant, that's the ideal way to do it. So this is telling me the exact step position? Yeah, and so there, there's something to be said about that. So each EEV and is going to be a little bit different. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, so I'm trying to figure out, so how is it showing you what the step position is? How are the lights functioning? Yeah, so the step position isn't always 100% accurate per se because there's so many different EEV stepper motors out there, right? There's a ton of different manufacturers, ton of different styles, sizes, and things like that. So I usually just use that as a reference point, you know? So if I go up to, let's say that I close it down a thousand, well, that wasn't enough, and then I go another 500. So I just kind of use it as that, so I don't have to, you know, one, 1,000, two, one, so I don't have to do that sort of thing. Um, the way that the lights function, um, whenever you're plugged into the EEV coil or the driver motor, you should see those lights pulsating going uh, clean, ac clean across here. If you see them just pause or get stuck, then you know there's something wrong okay. with that actual head. And at that point, you know, you can get your meter out and uh, conduct a, a resistance test on the EEV. Okay. Where can you find the EEV Mate? So you can go to, I think it's under eevmate.com. Okay. If you Google EEV Mate, this is the first one that comes up. Okay. Sweet. And this can work on a 
Sporland, Daikin. So far, I've tried it on uh, some of the train air handling units. Yeah. Stuff, pretty much all of the Daikin VRF stuff. There's a different adapter that goes for the mini splits. So okay. the mini splits have a slightly different plug adapter. Okay. But that is available on the website as well. But it's all of the Daikin VRV stuff. I've never had a problem. Some of the train AHU, some of the higher end stuff, it works on that as well. If this plugs in, there's a high chance that it's going to work for you. Okay. All right. Well, cool. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, it for Mechanical Pros this week. Thanks for hanging out with me, Quentin. Um, always good to have you. And uh, hit that like, hit that subscribe. Most of our viewers are not subscribers, so please hit that subscribe button. It matters for us as we grow this. And uh, if you guys have any comments or questions, we'd love to respond to them and provide more content. So uh, we'll catch you next time.